Hi there, Steve here, Steve Kaufman. And today I want to talk about the subjunctive in Spanish and other what I call language habits. The reason I'm doing this is because I uh, made a video in Spanish uh, a couple of weeks ago and one of the viewers here, a Spanish speaker, came on to correct me, which is fine, pointing out that I got the subjunctive wrong uh, on a couple of occasions. And also that I said la sistema instead of el sistema. Sistema, although it ends in an A, uh, like other words of Greek origin are often masculine. All right, they're both part of the same phenomenon. And that is this. First of all, with regard to the Spanish subjunctive, you can Google today and you can find umpteen websites that will give you a detailed explanation of when to use the subjunctive and what the endings are in the different verbs and the regular verbs and so forth and so on. I just looked at one. It had like eight different situations where you use the subjunctive. Uh, and then it had tables of endings and stuff like that. I think it's pretty well impossible to remember that when you are speaking, when you go to use the language. You can't possibly think, is this one of the eight situations that requires the subjunctive? I think it's important to be aware that there is a subjunctive in Spanish and French and Italian and even in English. I wish I were is the subjunctive. The subjunctive basically is a, a change in the form of a verb reflecting the fact that there is some wishing, some uncertainty, some obligation, that kind of thing. So it's not a straight this is, it's I wish this were. So this uncertainty surrounding the verb causes the verb to change in a number of languages. But how do we, and, and so, okay, so that's, that's what the subjunctive is in general terms. You can please do your own search to look for more specific rules. Rules which I have looked at many, many times and yet I continue to make mistakes. Why? Because language is a matter of habit and you can lose a habit. Uh, you can, if I'm surrounded by Spanish content and Spanish speaking people and reading a lot in Spanish, the likelihood that I maintain the sort of Spanish habit is greater. When I am not in that situation where I don't have, you know, the opportunity to hear, read, speak Spanish, I tend to revert back to habits from my own language that are more, you know, strongly ingrained in me. Uh, and that's normal. I mean, I often make the case that, uh, you know, you hear uh, German people say, I have lived in Canada since many years because that's the German structure. Uh, and and many, uh, Swedish people say it is many people in China instead of there are because that's the Swedish structure. Yet if we are surrounded by the language, we start, to, if we are open to the language, we start to pick up on the way people are speaking around us and we recover some of these habits. But to get something like the subjunctive right, you actually have to develop that as a habit. Now, reading the rules may help, but you'll, you'll, you'll very quickly forget what you've, what you've uh, read there. Another thing about these habits and about correct language habits, and, and let's just digress, learning out of the language is actually acquiring cultural habits, linguistics habits of another group. So you have to be open to receiving these influences to allow them to penetrate your brain, so to speak. But the fact that you get something like the subjunctive right once, several times for a period of time, doesn't mean that you will always get it right. It's the same if you play tennis, you, you, your serve goes in sometimes and sometimes the serve doesn't go in. The fact that you get it right doesn't mean you won't get it wrong later on and vice versa. The same is true with masculine and feminine. Now, I, uh, when I come to a word in Spanish where I'm aware that this is a Greek origin word, it's somewhere in my brain that tells me and I'm making a special effort to, to use the masculine. But you're going to get some of those wrong. And that's the same with people learning French, you know, the whole gender thing. You can't possibly go through all your words and rules for which is feminine and which is masculine. You have to develop that as a habit. You have to have these phrases that naturally come out of your brain. And we do develop the habits. For example, in Spanish, 
we say me gusta. Like everyone who has any knowledge of Spanish has no trouble saying me gusta, which is like, like, right? Which is not at all similar to English, but we use it so often, so often it becomes ingrained as a habit. The subjunctive is also a habit that we have to acquire, but uh, it doesn't come up as often. So, um, you know, uh, I, and this is not just the subjunctive, it's verbs of motion in Slavic languages or cases or tones in Chinese or all of these different things that are sort of um, structures or ways of speaking, you know, polite forms in Japanese. These are, are things that we have to get used to and we can fall out of habit if we aren't surrounded by the language. And when, when we go back to a situation where we're using the language and hearing the language and speaking it and reading it, we tend to, our level improves. And then of course, when we're away from it, the level can, you know, deteriorate, decline. And some things just simply don't get corrected. And uh, even native speakers, for example, lots of native speakers in French don't use the subjunctive correctly. And it's funny, the subjunctive becomes one of these sort of traps that teachers like. I, uh, I read somewhere that in order to get your bilingual bonus as an Anglophone, uh, you know, public servant in Canada, if you work for the government, they offer you a bilingual bonus. So if people couldn't get the subjunctive right, they wouldn't get their bilingual bonus, which of course is absolutely ridiculous because it's quite possible to communicate very effectively, to understand what is said, to get your meaning across, all without using the subjunctive. Lots of native speakers do it. They also, and, and we see this in English, there are forms that are gradually falling out of favor. A lot of people don't say if it were, they, they say if it was, and they don't say to whom, they say to who. So it's possible that the subjunctive will evolve or that in certain situations, people no longer use the subjunctive. So that to use this as a, a criterion for determining, you know, uh, bilingual bonuses in the Canadian public service is just ridiculous. However, we all would like to sound as elegant as possible in the language we are learning. That means we want to be accurate. We want to basically conform to what is considered correct usage. And if we want to get better at the Spanish subjunctive or gender or anything else, we simply need a lot of exposure to the language, listening, reading, speaking, writing. The more ways in which we interact with the language, if we are open to what's happening in the language, we will gradually up our game, improve. We may out of curiosity, go and check up the rules that affect the subjunctive. And in fact, I think it's a good thing to do. No question that this viewer of mine pointing out that I made some mistakes with the subjunctive makes me a little more, you know, aware of the subjunctive. And so I'm going to be a little more careful. I'm going to watch for it more when I listen and read. And when I speak, I'm going to make a little greater effort to make sure that I get the subjunctive right more often than wrong. And hopefully that way, uh, develop some good habits, but it won't be overnight and I can get it right once and wrong the next time. But the main thing is to communicate. So there you have it. Uh, my take on the Spanish subjunctive and other language habits. Thank you for listening. Bye for now.